Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let's start again with this uh, lecture. As I was saying, today will be a bit more freeform, and I want to introduce the steroid algebra and give you an important application which is related to what we discussed uh, last time, actually. So I want to discuss the steroid algebra and the homotopy type of MO. So today I'll explain how Tom uh, used the Pontryagin Tom theorem to actually to completely describe the homotopy type of MO, which has two big advantages. Advantage one is uh, that you, we know it's homotopy groups, so we know the actual bordism groups of manifolds. But even more so, uh, as I discussed with the steroid problem, uh, we can use information about the homotopy type to say something about geometric questions. In particular, today we will see why the map, for example, MO to HF2 splits, which which proved that the, steroid prob the unoriented steroid problem always had a positive solution. So that's the plan for today. And if we run out of time, and if you don't run out of time, I'll maybe say a couple of things of how you start setting up the Adam spectral sequence, but I'm not sure if we will have time. Otherwise, it will be on Monday. Okay, so let me define. So let I'll give basically the first definition for a general prime, uh, but the rest of today's class will be for P equals two, um, as following a long standing tradition in homotopy theory of not bothering with signs. Uh, so let be a prime. And also, because the case of MO, as we will see, the two is actually the one that's more important. And since the formulas are easier, I will be. So let me prime the steroid algebra. is the graded abelian group a upper star, which is the HFP the cohomology of HFP, or say it differently, it's pi minus star of maps from HFP to HFP. And it is given an algebra structure, well, FP algebra structure by uh, composition. So the zero degree part is as it's easy to see FP by whitehead or many things, and we have seen that endomorphism from HFP to HFP. And, oh, and there are no things in negative degree, which is the reason for this cohomological indexing convention, because we have seen AI is zero for all I less than zero, because we have seen that map HFP, sorry, map HFP, HFP is the same thing as maps in infinity groups from FP to FP, which is discrete. So there are no positive homotopy groups here. And these are basically all the ones that are easy to compute. But uh, I will give you a, well, let me give you a diff, another example of a class. So let's consider the uh, abelian group extension so which is uh, z mod p goes to z mod p squared goes to z mod p goes to zero so that is indeed a thing uh, this induces a fiber sequence H Z mod P, H Z mod P square, H Z mod P. Simplest possible way, you know, you, this is a map of a billion group, so you can dilute this map 
by B infinity, and then the fiber is necessarily H C mod B because of the long exact sequence. In general, every time you have a you have a, a short exact sequence of abelian groups, you get a fiber sequence of island vermiculin spectra. Uh, using this, this trick, you dilute the uh, I don't know the second map, for example, and then uh, the fiber has to be the first. So in particular, we get a boundary map beta from H Z mod B to H Z mod B. That's called the box time. Yeah, sorry, sigma. sigma. This is the Buxstein homomorphism. And in fact, it turns out that A1 is FP generated by the Buxstein. This requires some work. Maybe I'll sketch, maybe I'll say a couple of words about how you actually compute the steroid algebra. But, uh, okay. Oh, and note, note, that's an important note. Beta is zero on homotopy groups. But it's not null homotopic. Okay. It's zero in homotopy groups, well, because uh, it can be non-zero either on pi zero or in pi minus one. And in either of these cases, either the source or the target are zero. So not many choices there uh, for, for what to do on homotopy groups, but it is non-homotopic. And how do you show that? Um, you need to find, you find, uh, uh, what was it? Yeah the kernel of beta from, I don't know, uh, the, do we need, no, let's do homology. H of C mod P plus one X is the image of uh, C mod P square. Right, so it's enough to find a some space X and a class uh, here, not in the image of here, and uh, then the the image cannot be everything. To find to show. Beta is non zero, it's enough to find a space at X and a class HC mod P star X not in the image of HC mod P square X. And uh, that's the, the, let me do it the case P equals two, since it's simpler, you can take X some real projective space. Uh, what do I need? Probably RP two is enough. Let's say RP infinity, because why not? Uh, since we're at it, it doesn't really matter which one we take, right? Uh, and then you can check that the reduction that uh, H Z mod four star, uh, sorry, uh, one RP infinity is zero, but H Z mod four, uh, H Z mod two one RP infinity is Z mod two. And uh, well, um, is it zero? Hold on. Um, It has to be zero. In any case, th this map is certainly the zero map, which is what I. No, I think it's a sorry, it's a, a Z mod two here, but this map is the zero map. Uh, 
I mean, what is is clear, sorry, let me be, let me say what is certainly true is HZ1 RP infinity is zero that you can check, it's easy. And so let's see. Uh, so what is the cellular complex here? We have one cell in each dimension and the map is multiplication by two. No, no, that's zero, that's zero. Yeah, 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 because the kernel of this map is exactly the image of this map. Sorry. Anyway, the point is, okay, such such a complex is not hard to contract for every for every CP. For P, odd P use the equivalent of RP infinity use less lens spaces. The, the odd primary equivalent of RP infinity. But you, you can just explicitly construct it. And this is some sort, I mean, secretly what I'm using here, uh, let me just be clear, I'm using the this is omega sigma h z mod two. So it is in some sense the universal example, it's the universal guy containing a, a degree one cohomology class. And so if the box that box time is uh, non zero somewhere, it has to be non zero here. Since it's the universal example, that's one of those standard tricks. It's trickier to show. In reasoning like this, you can actually show that uh, uh, that the Bockstein is actually a generator of H uh, of A one. But okay, let me give you a, a theorem that describes completely the steroid algebra. Well, okay, let me think the first half. So for every, so from now on, P equals two. There are similar formulas for odd prime. They're more complicated and you have to pay attention to signs, which I really don't want to do. Um, especially since I don't know anyone, even the most experienced person that does not get confused by the signs here, uh, really. Uh, it's, uh, we should bet, find a better way of dealing with this, but such is life. So let's do P equals two. So for every I greater or equal than zero, there exists an element square I from H F2 to sigma I H F2 with the following properties. So, okay, Ooh, I forgot, sorry. So, okay, the first property is square zero is the identity and well, I should call it one, it's an algebra square one is the box line. Then we have uh, so under the equivalence, uh, the isomorphism, sorry, H of two star, ah, I forgot to mention one important thing. Uh, yeah, sorry, I really, really should, should, should mention and also, yeah, the, I'm not sure, yeah. Okay, the point is if you have alpha in a n, this gives you a map from h of two n x to a, uh, h of two i x to h of two i plus n x for every x spectrum. That's because you know this is homotopy classes of maps from h to sigma f two. This is homotopy classes of maps sigma h of two uh, by post composition. Sorry, you probably were wondering what I was saying with the box time. That that's exactly the action of the box time that I was uh, describing. Okay, so I have an action of the steroid algebra on the cohomology of every spectrum. 
and I'm going to describe what happens to the product. So under the isomorphism here, which is the QNET formula, um, you probably saw it only for spaces, but you can deduce quickly from spaces to spectra, or you can even prove it directly from spectra. The way you prove it, you fix a Y and you see that both sides are, so the, it is a map of cohomology theories uh, that is an isomorphism when X is the sphere. And so it is an isomorphism for every Y. By induction on the number of cells. Yeah, so anyway, under the, the QNET isomorphisms, square N acts on X tensor Y as the sum for I plus J equals N square I X tensor square J Y. And that's the Cartan formula. And another way of writing is that if you consider this composite cohomology operation, if you take square bullet, which is just the sum of square i for i greater or equal than zero, uh, you have square bullet of x tensor y equals square bullet of x tensor square bullet of y. It's sometimes a more convenient way of, of rephrasing this. And this is for x, y spectra. And now the steroid, the steroid squares, oh, sorry, yeah, these guys are called steroid squares, uh, have a particular behavior when you're in the cohomology of a space. So if x is a space, so the, the, the the cohomology is the same thing as the cohomology of sigma infinity x plus, so you, you still have the action. Uh, we have these two important properties that are called unstability properties. So for every little x in Hn x f2, which is Hf2 star sigma infinity plus sigma infinity x plus, we have so square n of x is x squared that's where the name steroid squares comes from they are built out of the squaring map if you i mean i'm not going to be able to tell you the, the construction but the construction is sort of rigged so that this happens and moreover you have square i of x is zero for all i greater than n These are called instability of the action. Note that we really, really need to use that we have a space here to state this property, particular because you don't have a, a multiplication on the cohomology of a spectrum, only on the cohomology of a space. Because the, the multiplication uses the diagonal map that exists for spaces, but there is no map from X to X tensor X for spectra. Well, for spectra of the form sigma infinity x plus, there is, you just take the diagonal map of the space, and that gives you the multiplication. If you remember, the multiplication was given by, you know, the external product followed by pullback along the diagonal map. And so you really need to use the diagonal map. And in particular, moreover, two implies that square bullet is a ring map. I mean, that's, you, you post compose these with pullback along the diagonal and you get, that is a ring map. That's useful. And okay, these are the properties that are easy to remember, the one that I can only remember. And then now I need an additional property, uh, which I need to copy because <laughs> it's going to be complicated. Questions about the properties so far before I do this? No. 
Okay, the following property is the ADM relation. So that describes the multiplication in the Steinroth algebra. So for every i less than 2j, we have square i composed with square j is the sum from k that goes from 0 to the floor of 1 over 2 uh, of this nice binomial coefficient times square i plus j minus k square k. And notice that stuff sort of works because this is in degree i plus j and this is also in degree i plus j. And these are all the important things in degree i plus j. The only thing you need to work out are the coefficients and uh, well, that's what they are. And this is actually secretly this you can secretly see this by computation on the cohomology of BCP square, or sorry, in this case, BC4. But that would, it's, a, yeah, it's what it is. There are other ways of rephrasing it that are maybe more conceptual, but I will need the explicit formulas for, for today. And that's actually what you end up using in practice most of the time, unfortunately, the explicit formulas. Uh, so that's, what I'm writing. Note in particular that this guy, so here I said i is less than 2j, but if you look at all the non-zero coefficients here, you have that i plus j minus k is going to be greater or equal than 2k. So in particular, these uh, This uh, implies that you can uh, you can write the uh, every product of terms in which i is less than two j as a sum of products of terms in which the first term is greater or equal than twice the second in degree. The degree of the first is greater or equal than twice the degree of the second. Uh, that is because so i if it's no zero i has to be greater or equal than two k. And um, yeah, J minus K is also greater or equal than zero, I think. Yeah. Anyway, you can, this is a very, it's, it's not very important, the combinatorics, or rather it is important, but the upshot is this corollary. Uh, the subalgebra generated by square i's is spanned by monomials of the form square y1 square i n if i j greater or equal than twice uh, i j plus one. And in fact, it turns out that these guys are uh, linearly independent. So let me write these as square i, i1. And this is called an admissible sequence. Admissibility is this condition here. And then I'm going to take the following theorem, a upper star, oh, sorry, the collection square i, as i is an admissible sequence, is a basis for 
a star over f2. Okay, so these are, I think, all the properties of the steroid algebra that we're going to need. Couple of words about how to actually prove these things. Um, okay, are there questions about this statement first, though? No, yes, no, maybe I should. Uh, okay, so just to make sure I understood. So the subalgebra generated by the SQI, so it's the subalgebra of the Steenrod algebra? Yeah, it turns out to be everything. Ah, it turns out, okay, uh, but, uh, and it's spent as a FPU, uh, 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 as a FP algebra by these monoids. No, it's spent as an F2 vector space. I mean, the subalgebra is spanned, uh, right? The, 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 the subalgebra is spanned by all possible monomials. I'm saying that if you have the Adam relations, you can write every other monomial in term, in, uh, as a linear combination of these admissible monomials. So okay, okay, thanks. And then it turns out that indeed, so the, this theorem is essentially the state, two statements the statement that the square i's generate everything. And the statement that they are the, all these admissible monomials are linearly independent. So there, I, I'm putting them together because you prove them together, but they are sort of two different statements uh, wrapped into one. So the way to prove. This is, well, HF2 star HF2. The idea is you can write it as co-limit of HF2 star plus N of KF2N. That's because of the standard presentation of HF2, because HF2 is the co-limit over, oh, I'm saying co-limit, no, of course, that's the limit, um, sorry. It's the co-limit of sigma minus n sigma infinity plus, and sorry, and yeah, I should say reduced, k f to n. That's just the standard presentation. So to compute the steroid algebra, you need to compute the cohomology of these KF2N spaces, uh, which is more complicated than the steroid algebra, actually, I thought not much more. Um, and this is computed by an inductive procedure. using the Sire spectral sequence. I'm sorry, I've been told that I shouldn't use Sire spectral sequence for uh, the vibration. So we have K F two M, we have a point, and we have the loops, which is K F two N minus one. And this is non-trivial. Um, there, there is a, some, some very refined analysis you need to do here. But knowing what the answer ought to be helps. Like if you have a guess for what the answer should be for the cohomology of this guy, you can try to do some little comparison of spectral sequences and et cetera. So Pavel should have told you briefly about the cell spectral sequence uh, yesterday. Um, I don't want to, I mean, I think he did the, the case n equals two, perhaps, or n equals one. I don't know. I think he said something about how to compute the cohomology of elementary McLean spaces. And that's essentially that kind of argument, only more complicated. Um, I'll put a reference, perhaps, in the notes in the book. The book of Mosher and Tangora has a good explanation of this. As a, 
uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a it's a complicated computation, but you can do every step inductively, and you end up with the formula I told you for the Steinort algebra, which is what I want to use today. Uh, and you have to start with the cohomology of RP infinity, which thankfully we will need uh, also in the following because RP infinity is also related to Don spectrum. And so we start with H uh, RP infinity F2, which perhaps I already said it, I'm not going to remember, but is F2 X for degree of X1. which I think was done perhaps in algebraic topology one or maybe stated, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, a quick way out to, to see these, actually you first compute the cohomology of CP infinity using uh, the fiber sequence here. And then you get the cohomology of RP infinity using um, the fiber sequence um, which one did I need to use hmm. yeah RP infinity CP infinity s1 there are two fiber sequences uh, this comes from the fact that CP infinity is a kz2 and this is secretly the fiber sequence coming from a fiber sequence of uh, billion groups and loop the infinity. And you put all together, you get the cohomology of RP infinity. There are other ways more elementary to compute it, but I like it this because it's actually quite straightforward once you learn how to use the search spectral sequence. You don't need to, to put a lot more input than the existence of these two fiber sequences. This one is in particular super easy. It's basically trivial. And these, these requires a couple more work, but the point is that the, this, this fiber sequence, this is a spectral sequence actually degenerates at the E2 page. So there is really nothing to be said for the reasons. Okay, anyway, we, we start with this material. If you don't know what the suspect sequence is, don't worry, I'm not using the suspect sequence, I'm just hinting to how these computations are actually done, if you are curious. And these, I think these probably should have been stated. I think this is like one of those things that people always tell you, but no one ever tell you how to prove. I mean, it's easy to see how it is additively, this guy, of course, because you have an explicit cell structure, but you want to understand the multiplicative structure and that's typically a bit harder. Okay. Okay. Now, I think that's all I want to say about the, the steroid algebra. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, okay, I'm going to start the computation. I'm going to start to, to compute how the steroid algebra acts on a bunch of spaces, starting with RP infinity. Um, so other questions before, before doing this? And again, this is going to go to the homotopy type of MO. And the reason I'm starting with RP infinity is that secretly RP infinity is B01, of course, because O1 is just the group Z02. And I'm going to build inductively from O1 to ON to O, and then use the Thomas isomorphism and do some magic, and I will end up knowing everything about MO out of this. By the way, uh, there is a much cleaner way of presenting this computation using the dual steroid algebra, uh, but I didn't want to introduce co-algebras uh, and Hopf algebras in, in this class for lack of time. So I'll present the historically first way of doing this computation by Tom that uses just the steroid algebra. Okay. So, okay, question now. Action of square star 
on the cohomology of RP infinity. And um, for, for brevity now, I'm going to stop writing F2 coefficients every time I have cohomology. Um, all cohomology will be with F2 coefficient. Well, this is actually easy because let's see. Well, square zero of X is X because, uh, yeah, because it's identity. And by the instability, we also have the square one of X is X square because X is in degree one. And square I of X is zero for all I greater than one. And these actually are all the squares. So we know the action on the polynomial generator. In particular, square bullet of X is just X plus X square. But remember, uh, square bullet was a map of rings. So square bullet of X to the N is square bullet of X to the N, it's X plus X square to the N, which is sum of, uh, for I from zero to N of N choose I X to the Hmm. n plus i. This is just uh, i plus 2n minus. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm doing this right. Two n minus i is 2n plus i, sorry. So, upshot is square i x is the term in degree uh, x to the n is the term in degree n plus i of this. So it's uh, the coefficient of x n plus i, which if I'm not mistaken, should be n choose uh, I minus N, no, it's gonna be right. I think I am doing a sign mistake here. Do you need maybe two N minus one? Oh, no, 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 that's the point, sorry. I was, uh, I... I should do this and plus I, okay, great. Uh, just a small indexing mistake, sorry. Uh, right, this is, you know, differently x, x squared to the i, x to the m minus i, and that's just x m plus i. The other, I was doing the other way around, it was also, of course, a valid thing to do, but it index, the indexing was confusing, and I think this formula is, is, is a clean way of stating things. Okay. Great, we have the completely understand the action of the steroid algebra. And if you really, really feel fancy, you can actually verify in this case that the ADM relation, the relations are indeed satisfied. Uh, it will give you an interesting uh, relation on, on binomial coefficients that for which you can find a combinatorial interpretation of if you feel very clever. Uh, but uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let it as an exercise if you want to do it. <laughs> now we are going to need some information about the cohomology of B of D. So next step is compute the cohomology of B of D with the action of the upper star. And again, this is, I'm just going to, to give you the fiber sequence for the answer and the fiber sequence that will tell you for the, uh, from which you can apply the star spectral sequence. And again, when you know what the answer ought to be, it's also easier to analyze the, the star spectral sequence. The idea is that 
you have a map from O1 to the D into OD, just the inclusion of, uh, of diagonal matrices. Or if you want, this is the map. This can just sum up B O one to the D to B O D. And if you want, this is the map that classifies the sum or the, the, the product of D copies of the universal line bundle. This gives you a vector bundle of rank D. And this is classified by this map. Eta one, eta one. O one to the D. And okay. So we get a map from the cohomology of BOD inside, uh, sorry, inside the cohomology of B one D, which by the Kinet formula is just I'm going to call it F two X one X D. And okay, the claim now is that this map is injective. With image, the symmetric polynomials. Uh, of course, the image is clearly contained in the symmetric polynomials because the action of sigma d here, the, the map is equivariant for the action of sigma d. So this map is equivariant for the action of sigma d here. And the action of sigma d, by the way, of course, per, just permits the generators. So this is just a permutation in the, in the Kunet formula, permutation of the tensor factors. And so it lands inside the symmetric polynomial. And I'm claiming that this is the case and the proof Again, is a stereo spectral sequence argument. Induction on D using the fiber sequence B O D goes to B O so, uh, D plus one with fiber S D. And what is this fiber sequence? Well, you have this map. You have clearly this map that induces OD inside OD plus one by adding just a one. Right, we have this map. And they claim that its homotopy fiber is uh, OD modulo OD, uh, sorry, OD plus one modulo OD. which is identified with SD by, by sending, by taking the last, uh, the last column of your matrix. And why is this the fiber? Well, this is actually a general statement. Uh, but in this particular case, you can take the fiber because I give you, remember, an explicit contractible space with a vibration to BOD. And you can actually compute the, the, the fiber product there and see that it is exactly as yes. Or if you want another way of, of seeing that this D, this is the D dimensional Grassmannian sitting inside the D plus one dimensional Grassmannian by sending a vector space V to one plus V. And you can see that. Uh, well, okay, the homotopy fiber. Okay, this is perhaps less obvious that the homotopy fiber is SD, but you can actually explicitly compute it. It is a general statement, though, that if you have an inclusion of a subgroup, this map is just the coset group. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, is it clear the statement though? So by using the uh, 
the fundamental theorem on symmetric polynomial, this is a polynomial ring with degree of vi is i, and vi under this embedding corresponds exactly to uh, for all sigma, well, uh, x, j, 1, x, j, i. The, the, the degree i elementary symmetric polynomial. That's going to be important. These WI have a name. These are called the Stiefel Witten classes. And note then. By right, taking the co-limit in D, you can check that the inclusion of B O D minus one into B O D cor corresponds to quotienting out by W D. You can see that this is the cohomology of this infinite Grassmannian is actually this guy. And it's the action of the steroid algebra on this infinite Grassmannian that I want to compute. But, or well, rather, I'm going to tell you the answer uh, because, and explain how we get it because it's combinatorially a bit painful. But, okay, is, is this, this, this statement clear? Oh, by the way, this statement, this claim here as a name, I probably should have said it, it's called the splitting principle. And that's because, as I said, this is the universal map that splits your vector bundle in, as the sum of, of uh, uh, the line bundles. So the, what is the saying is that in, for all that cohomology is concerned, you can always assume that the vector bundle is the sum of the line bundles. So that's a useful statement. And in fact, we're going to use it immediately to compute the, uh, the action of the steroid algebra on it. Why so? Well, because now from these, you can deduce the action of square bullet onto wi because square bullet wi is just the sum of xj1 xji but these were classes in rp infinity and some bo1 which is rp infinity and so this is just the sum a j one plus a j one squared times a j i. Uh, sorry, plus a j i squared. And then you can expand and write these in terms of symmetric polynomial, and it is uh, tricky, but not that there are no new ideas that you need to, to. You just expand it, and the upshot is that you get the following formula square i of wj is the sum for t that goes from 0 to i of j plus t minus i minus 1 t t e minus t j minus j plus t. And this is, goes on the name vu formula, by the way.
And a couple of words uh, about what I mean with the binomial coefficients, because if you look at this formula, you'll notice that the top part of the binomial coefficient might become negative. And here, when I say n choose i, I literally mean this, which makes sense also for n greater than less than zero. You can just write it, it, it is an integer, and then you can just reduce it mod two. Just it, it, if I had to like express it in formulas that always have this top part positive, it's going to be even more complicated. And it's just simpler to, to adopt this. And by the way, we only, since we are working mode two, we only care about the parity of this integer. So it's not like we are doing uh, very complicated things here. Okay. Whew. And I mean, I'm not going to, to, to work out from this formula to the Wu formula. You can, hopefully it's clear that with some patience, you can, you can rearrange things so that it gets. And again, this is one, another one of those situations where it's a lot easier to know the answer because you can just actually plug in our formulas for the BI here and expand and see that this coincides with the expansion of this. Well, if you had to go the other way around, of course, it would require a lot more ingenuity. Uh, I have no idea how who actually came up with the formula in the first place. But, you know, it's good for him. OK, so now we have the cohomology of BO. Questions so far? Because I'm going to claim that uh, now we have also the cohomology of MO, which was what we wanted. Because now recall, by the Thomas isomorphism, HF2MO is a module, uh, sorry, it's a free module of rank one on H F two star sigma infinity B O plus. So I actually stated it saying that there is an isomorphism of this, which is an isomorphism of modules. But since uh, we are going to have to be a bit careful with what we're dealing with, I'm going to, so, so the elements of H star MO will be written as uh, P times theta, where P is a polynomial in this, an infinite polynomial in these guys, and theta in HF two zero MO is the Tom class. Sometimes people just omit the theta, but I think this gets a lot confusing because then the action of the steroid algebra is different. Because in particular by the Cartan formula, we can get square i of p theta, uh, sorry, square n, but sum i plus j square i p times square j theta. So what this boils down to is that to describe the action of the steroid algebra on hf2 star mo, 
we need to understand just the action on theta. I mean, okay, to, technically I told you only this action on the VWI, but then, you know, using the, the Cartan formula, again, expanding all monomials, you can actually write down everything. So the missing step in understanding the steroid algebra action on, on H star, HF2 star MO is understanding it on theta. And now we're going to use an amazing trick to do this. I'm sorry for you to the amazing trick. Um, can you explain again why uh, HF2 upper star MO is a free modular Frank 1? That's the Tom isomorphism. So, okay, I'm using that BO is HF2 orientable. Uh, okay. uh, because remember, every, every vector bundle was always uh, HF2 orientable. Ah, right. And then MO is the Tom space for the is the Tom spectrum for sigma yeah. infinity of BO plus. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, thanks. Okay. And remember that MO has an, well, as a co-action of this guy. So there is a map from MO to MO tensor sigma infinity plus BO, uh, BO plus, which was just the tomification of the diagonal map. And this gives you an action of this, uh, co well, it's a co-action of this co-algebra on this thing. But when you uh, apply co-module, the codes disappear and you end up with an action of this ring on this, on this uh, module. And I claim that the Tom isomorphism was indeed an isomorphism of uh, modules. And which is just a fancy, I mean, seeing it's a free model of rank one is just a fancy way of saying that this is isomorphic to this as module. But it's, I mean, I'm, I'm writing this because I want to write the elements as some element of HS uh, of, of the cohomology of BO times the Tom class. Because then, you know, you have this formula. Okay. So we basically, we reduced to compute square J theta. And we are almost there. We're going to use the splitting principle once again. So, okay, recall MO, we add this, we use it also yes, uh, yes, uh, Monday, we add this, this formula here, this canonical presentation, well, it's not the canonical presentation, but we have this canonical presentation that comes from the writing BO as the co-limit of the BO ends. And we have, so, uh, well, the reduced cohomology to n is a free module of rank one on the non-reduced cohomology of B O N. So I'm going to write H tilde n is H B O N times theta. And this theta n is actually the restriction of the theta for MO, of course. The pullback of the, this theta for MO. So we're going to actually see what happens on, on, um, on, these, on these things. Oh, because now you get, sorry. O is the, is the sorry, is the limit, the reduced theta n. And uh, we'll see. For n sufficiently big, this will give us our, our formulas. So let's start with n equals one. So trick tom eta one is rp infinity again. Uh, 
how is this possible? Well, remember, Tom Etawan was just uh, the cofiber of eta one minus zero going into eta one. Or equivalently, the cofiber of the spherical bundle into uh, B of one. But remember, what is this guy? This guy is what I called V1, is the first Stiefel manifold. Because this is exactly, you know, all x in eta one such that norm of x is one. But this was exactly, you know, pairs x comma l such that l in r infinity as dimension one, x is in l norm of x is one. And that's what I sorry, that's what the sphere bundle is, but that's the Stiefel manifold. Because remember, eta one was just the set of pairs x comma l such that x is in l. And that's contractible because we proved it. So that's BO1 now seen as a pointed space. Careful, because now I'm going to have to take reduced cohomology. And so the reduced cohomology of this guy is the reduced cohomology of RP infinity, which as a module is just this module here. It's just the ideal generated by X and just taking out the, the, the zero part, the degree zero part. Ha, huh. but we know the action of the steroid algebra over this guy. So X, in particular, it's theta. Unfortunately, this is not quite enough, but we can, uh, because uh, of course, this C is only W1. This is only your, essentially the projection from H upper star MO to H upper star theta eta one corresponds to just quotienting out all W2, W3, W, etc. So we want a little bit more. But we can use the splittings principle now. So now you have BOD, sorry, BO1 to the D mapping to BOD. And here I get my Tom BOD, the guy, or Tom eta D, the guy we want to study. And the induced map on Tom spectra is Tom eta one smash D. Remember smash and, and direct sum. Direct sum of vector bundles gives smash of Tom spaces. So we have uh, H tilde, the Tom space of eta D maps into H tilde of the Tom space of eta one tensor D. And under the Tom isomorphism, This is exactly this map here. And the Tom class here goes to the product of the Tom classes here. Sorry, uh, upstairs. Which I guess I called X tensor. So if I call this uh, x1, xd, the ideal generated by the product x1, xd here, and uh, this class is exactly x1, xd. And the point is, this is an injection. So if we want to understand the uh, the Tom class, uh, the steroid algebra in the Tom class, we can understand it uh, here. So, 
So to understand square i theta, oh sorry, square bullet theta, it's enough to understand square bullet of x1, xd. Is it clear this, this step? Because now this is square bullet x1, blah, 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 square bullet xd. But OK. Uh, that's x1 plus x1 square, xd plus xd square. And if you, OK, I guess. Now, let me actually do this. I am skipping so many steps. Let me actually do this, this computation since it's doable. Um, this is the sum. Uh, so you have, yeah, you have one monomial for each subset. So, okay, now you, let's collect x1, xd, which was our theta plus xd that we can certainly do and so we get theta times the sum over all subsets xds but that's if you look at what it means this is theta times w0 which sorry is 1 w1 w2 wd because that's literally the sum of all the elementary symmetric polynomials. So what it boils down is square i theta is w i theta for i lesser or equal than d. And when you let go, d go to infinity, this formula just, uh, just holds no restriction on i. We're done. Uh, we have completely understood the action on the steroid algebra. Uh, by the way, this sometimes is used as the definition of the WIs. In, uh, in for example, in the book by uh, Milner and Stashev on characteristic classes. Um, so I, I'm also showing you that the definition I gave you of the WIs earlier actually consist, coincides with the definition of WIs in the literature. Of course, there are other proofs of this, but since, since we had to do it anyway. So, okay. Now there is a super complicated um, combinatorial thing, but I'll try to motivate it one second. But first, are there questions about this formula? So actually, let me circle uh, the important part since we're going to let d go to infinity anyway. No, we are not going to meddle with finite Grassmannians anymore. We have our complete description of h star m o. Okay. So now, homotopy type of MO. Okay, so the first remark, remark one. So remember we have, so we have H star MO is F2 W1 Etc. times theta. This is called theta. If you want, it's canonically is a, a free module of rank one over this ring with class theta. And we have this action on square one y, and we had the Wu formula earlier here for the action on wj. And now we understand everything. So the first remark is pi star mo is to torsion. And there are purely homotopical ways of doing this, but 
um, for example, computing the, the cohomology of the Grassmannian with FP coefficients for every P and then rationally and et cetera, and see that there is nothing interesting going on. But since we proved the Pontryagin Tom theorem, uh, it's enough to show that O uh, N, the unoriented Bordism group, is two torsion. Because if we have um, a class here, we need to show that the class of M disjoint N is trivial. But M disjoint union M, so 2M is the class of M disjoint union M. And it, that's the class of the boundary of the cylinder. So that's zero. And here I am using that I'm unoriented because normally the orientations of the two ends of the boundary would be different. But since we are completely ignoring orientation data in this case, there is no, in fact, there's an F2 vector, vector space. And in fact, we will explicitly write down the F, a basis for this F2 vector space. Well, Okay, I'm not going to, you can actually give explicit manifolds to give the basis, but I'm just going to, to construct the, the homotopy classes. And let you um, do the tricks. So, okay, now there is the claim. Let me define, so let, uh, Omega is A1, A2, blah, 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 AR, the uh, partition of, of uh, uh, M. That is, it's an, un it's an unordered family of num integers, i.e. non-ordered. family of integers such that sum of AI is M. Okay. Then I want to define a class X omega in the cohomology of M. And I'll define it again by giving you a class in the cohomology of Tom uh, eta d for, for any d that will clearly restrict to each other. This x omega is a sum of uh, t1 a1, uh, sorry, t sigma 1 a1. Well, okay. Let me write it like this is the symmetrization of this polynomial. So I give you a monomial, but I need, and I need to sum it all its conjugates so that I get a symmetric, oh, sorry, I call them X here. Uh, why I'm using T here, not sure. So yeah, this guy, and these, it can be written as some polynomials in the WIs. Um, in general, it's, well, we have an algorithm for doing that if you remember the formulas on the fundamental theorem of symmetric functions, but uh, it might be unexplicit. So I'm going to just write it in terms of this. This sits inside, well, this is. No, sorry. Uh, Of course, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. These classes are not in, in, in the homology of Tom space, they're homology of the Grassmannian. Of course, I mean, what I wrote was were not classes. And the problem is that Tom's original paper, which I am following here, 
does not distinguish between the cohomology of the Tom space and the cohomology of the Grassmannian since they are canonically identified just with a different steroid algebra action. So I, I forgot to, uh, I made a mistake here in copying things. Uh, but I, I prefer to keep them separate since uh, they are separate groups if canonically identified. Okay, you have these classes and this X omega form a basis, an additive basis of H star B O. These are basically a parameterization of all, symmetrization of all possible monomials. So, you know, additive basis. Therefore, X omega theta for an additive basis for H star MO. Okay. Now, okay, there is a super complicated combinatorial argument here that I think I'm just going to, to, to sketch. But the point, let me define, let me say that omega uh, is non diadic. if none of the AI is of the form two to the M minus one. Okay, I have a partition in elements that are not uh, uh, not a power of two minus one. And here comes the theorem, which is the, the key computation that makes this work. So H upper star of MO is a free A upper star module on H omega theta, where Omega runs through all non dyadic partitions. And uh, this is actually not super trivial to prove. Uh, so I gave you all the, I mean, you can see that I told you everything explicitly, right? You have explicit formulas for everything, but the combinatorics here is trickier. So the way to prove it is actually to filter this guy as an A upper star module, well, to, to filter this guy, yeah, as an A upper star module and prove the statement on the associated gradient. And the filtration is given by total degree of the partition uh, and uh, number of uh, diadic variables. So the idea is filter H star M O by the subspaces F S and M O uh, spend by h omega has, uh, I can never remember if I have to do an increasing or decreasing filtration here. 
I think, decreasing. Less or equal than S dyadic uh, num uh, elements. And then you can actually, you know, compute everything and see that the associated graded is free. And so the original guy was free. This is a filtration by A upper star submodules. If I've chosen the direction correctly, hopefully. Um, and this needs to be verified. This is not obvious, but you know, I gave you formulas so you can actually check. And the associated graded is free. No, sorry, it's not a filtration by air pressure. No, yeah, that's a filtration by air pressure. Yeah, that's true. And then. Um, that's uh, yeah yeah i think that's the, the right order in which to do things and i mean again i don't want to i mean if i had more time i would do a complete uh, a, the complete proof here but hopefully you can see how how you you can just write down the point is that in the associated graded a lot of this steroid action just dies so it's a lot easier to see that It's easier to see that, that things are linearly independent and etc. Okay, um, questions about the statement and or the sketch. No. Okay, because now from these, we conclude. So now, okay. Uh, now we, we go actually the actual theorem, right, Tom? The map from MO to the sum. Uh, the degree HF2, where omega runs on non dyadic is a homotopy equivalence. And this is just some of these maps. And these actually tells us also what its homotopy groups are, of course. And in fact, a more refined, uh, a more refined, well, okay, I'll say later what a more refined analysis can tell us. And the proof is easy. By the previous result, this is an equivalence on HF2 cohomology. Because, uh, well, because on HF2 cohomology is exactly uh, this map here, which we claimed to be an isomorphism. Right? Moreover, it is an iso on. Um, H, Z, to invert uh, hom cohomology. That's because both sides are zero. Oops. 
Hence, it is an ISO on HZ cohomology. by putting together with the fracture square. Well, okay, it's easier than the fracture square, but since we have the fracture square, we might as well use it. But then it is an equivalence since both sides are connective. That's by Whitehead theorem. It was also in an exercise. If you have a spectrum whose, if you have a connective spectrum with HZ homology trivial, then it has to be the zero spectrum. All homotopy groups are zero. And you need connective here, uh, of course, uh, because you have to start the induction somewhere. And then last week exercise, there was actually an example of a, of a non-connective spectrum with a trivial integral homology. That was KU mod B. But in this case, both sides are manifestly connective. Since remember, this is just a co-limit of spheres. So this is connective and this is, well, this is connective. I mean, look at it. It's, it's homotopy groups are definitely all in positive degree. And that's the end of the proof. And therefore, uh, we have a description of all its borders in group of unoriented manifolds. And as far as I know, it is the only way of proving it, actually. I don't know of any other proof. I mean, this is, this is part of the, this theorem is part of the motivations why people were inspired at uh, defining spectra, because all these when if you read Tom's original paper, it actually works with just formal limits of cohomologies and homotopy and etc. of Tom spaces. And people started thinking, oh, there must be a better way of encoding uh, this data, and so they come up with the notion of spectrum. And that's that was it was not the only. The, there is also the Brown representability theorem, of course, was an important motivation. But, uh, But uh, yeah, so yeah, I think I'm, that's all I want to say for today. And oh, and notice that the corollary, of course, of the map, MO to HF2 has a section. Okay, that's obvious. But since we used it last time, uh, let me point it out. So you can see this is a, these are natural geometric questions. I mean, what are the Bordism groups? When is that, in fact, you can look at it more carefully and see that it tells you that uh, a manifold is a boundary if and only if all the stiefel witten classes of its tangent bundle are trivial. The, the, by stiefel witten classes of a bundle, I mean the pullback of the, if, if you look carefully at what, what we've done today, so there, there, is, there are these natural you know, geometric questions. When is a manifold a boundary? Uh, what's the solution to the steroid problem? And you can turn these into homotopy theoretical questions. Um, and actually, let me actually remark a more careful analysis gives MO uh, well, homotopy, in fact, much more than homotopy, but ring structure given by the tensor product of vector bundles at the level of spaces. You have a map, you know, coming from uh, BOD times BOD prime, BOD D prime, tensor product of vector spaces, uh, which encodes. the Cartesian products of manifolds. Uh, 
And uh, if you look at this, in fact, all the computation I did is 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 uh, is, uh, uh, is enough to 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 deduce. And from these, you can actually write these as um, what was the name of these generators? Um, yeah, di i different to m minus one for degree of di is i. If you look at it additively, is exactly the the group I described before. But this is the way usually the formula is written using leveraging the multiplicative structure to 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 to, to get a shorter description. Um, I don't want. I mean, I, I'm out of time, so I don't think I am going to say anything more about the multiplicative structure. But really, all the ingredients are, are there. Are there questions? If there are no questions, I'll also say that pi star and mu can be computed. These are the Borgism groups of manifolds with a complex structure on the stable normal bundle. It's they're called almost complex manifolds. Uh, sorry, no, they're not almost complex. They're even less than almost complex manifolds, but OK. Uh, if you know what I mean. The normal bundle can be given a complex structure. And uh, this is a very important thing. As I said, it, it turns out to run the show in the homotopy groups. And pi star of MSO, the oriented Borden group, is also interesting and can also be well, computed, I put, I put it between quotes because I'm not aware of a nice closed formula, unfortunately. Uh, the, the, the integral part, the, sorry, the, 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 when you invert the two, it's kind of nice, but the two torsion part gets a bit uh, unpleasant. But you, I mean, in some level, you, you have everything uh, in your hand, you know, the step is always the same. You, you compute the mod two cohomology and then study the steer reduction there and actually do a more refined analysis than I say words next time when I talk about the atom spectral sequence to get the homotopy. Here we lacked out because the, 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 the steer reduction was free. And so it was a simple argument, but you can do a more refined study, which we will do next time. Um. Um, okay, so I, I have a question. Um, namely, is, is there an easy way to relate from this point of view um, stiefel whitney classes and Chern classes, say, say of uh, vector mm -hmm. bundles and complex manifolds? I mean, yes and no, in the sense that, yeah, I mean, the, 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 so we have sort of seen that the F2 cohomology of BO is this infinite ring. Right, and uh, the equivalent version for Chern classes is that the integral cohomology of this guy is this integral ring. So here the degree of wi is i. Here the degree of the Chern guy is two i. These are called Chern classes, and um, this is and the, the proof is pretty much the same as the one I, I said for wi. Use the fact though that every complex vector bundle is H z orientable, not just H f two orientable. To, to get a stronger statement. Uh, and of course, you have maps from BO to BU that are complexification and from BU to BO. And you can, in fact, tell us exactly what they do on, on, on cohomology. Uh, geez, now, if you ask me <laughs> exactly what they do under this description, you could catch me unprepared. Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, so the BU, BU thing is what I want yeah, yeah, yeah. to be. OK, OK, cool. Yeah, that, that's in fact the first step in understanding the, the, the homotopy groups of MO, the same way in which the homology of the Grossmannian was the first step in understanding the, the homotopy groups of MO. 
uh, but that's not that's not hard. And by the way, these can also be computed. Bo and Bu actually have explicit cell structures that you can write down if you are a representation theorist, uh, and uh, you can actually see the cells. Um, or since here, him is here, yeah, is here. Or if you know the Gelinisky B rule decomposition, actually, that's another way of getting these explicit cell structures. Uh, so I could have just given you a cell structure for the Grassmannian by hand, just writing it down the cells and say, oh, so the cohomology is this, uh, but it feels a bit shitty. Uh, I, I thought, I think that was historical during the first proof. Not sure, but <laughs> anyway. Okay, further questions? No, then I think I'll call it off for today. And uh, I hope this was interesting and it's a bit sketchy. Uh, but uh, yeah, see you on Monday. I think next week is the last week, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken by the academic calendar. So I'll say some few words about the other spectral signals. Right. Okay, thanks a lot. See you on Monday. You.